Guess we're back with another MyCritic version 7 feature. I've already covered WireGuard before during the beta version. However, there is some changes that MyCritic brought out um, in the new release. And I think it's good to just bring out an updated, refreshed WireGuard video to show you how quick and easy it is to set up as a server on MyCritic, as well as how to connect to it, even from something like your computer. So let's get into the video. All right, so let's think about WireGuard and what it is. I've actually opened up their website so that we can quickly just discuss and explain what WireGuard is. And in the short explanation is WireGuard is basically a VPN protocol that is in the same category as IPsec or OpenVPN. It actually looks at replacing some of those technologies. And what WireGuard's aim is, it aims to be very accessible or easy to set up while being super secure. So that is actually very nice about WireGuard. It, there, there's no difficulty in the setup. It's not like you're having this two-way call with like um, some other person and then you guys are troubleshooting phase one and two proposals and stuff like that. It's literally just you connecting to a public key of a peer, their IP address, and then you say which networks you want to access. And there you go. That's how quick and easy it is. So that is a short of WireGuard. What I'll do is I'll also put a link in the description to this white paper, which goes more in detail about everything that WireGuard actually does and all of the really in-depth stuff for you to read at your own pace. But I can tell you that it's definitely this is a awesome, awesome VPN protocol. And we're going to set this up now on MyCritic on EVNG. Alrighty, here we go. We've got a little Eve topology set up. I've got basically this VPC is representing my own computer, even though we're not going to be really using the VPC to connect, but we will form a WireGuard tunnel from my actual computer to a MicroTik in the cloud, which will be acting as a server. And this will be called the HQ MicroTik. And then to that MicroTik, there will also be a site MicroTik connecting so that we got some site to site connectivity. And we've actually got a way to reach branches or remote offices or whatever you want to call them via our WireGuard tunnel. So this is going to be fun and interesting. So let's put on our hats and just quickly go over the topology and how WireGuard actually works. Because what WireGuard does is, in essence, it has two things that needs to be specified. The first thing is the WireGuard interface which relates to everything on your client, on your machine, on your server, on your on your device itself. So this relates to stuff like the listening port that it's using, that a remote side would connect with, what its private key is, what its public key is, and um, other stuff like DNS that you maybe want to use. So that is what your WireGuard interface relates to. Then you've got a WireGuard peer that you need to specify. So the peer, relates to stuff like a remote side's IP address that you'll be using to connect to, what the remote port is, um, what the allowed IPs are, which in essence comes down to which type of subnets or uh, routes do you want to push over this WireGuard tunnel. So if you're a client, you might just leave it as 000 slash zero so that you push all traffic over the WireGuard tunnel and then you've got some nice VPN security going on. Um, but maybe you don't want to push all the traffic over the WireGuard interface then you can specify exactly which allowed IPs you want to set. So on a server, you might just see a bunch of allowed IPs where its default route will still go out over its normal path, whereas the clients would just connect using a default route out. Okay, so that is the short of WireGuard. Let's quickly configure it. Um, I want to show you on MicroTik, there is a little bit of a, I don't want to say a gimmick, but there is some stuff that we're going to set up specifically on MicroTik where we're going to set the IP address on the WireGuard interface as well. We, if you're using a client, like on your phone or Windows, then this is part of the interface configuration where you set your IP, but on MicroTik, you need to create an IP and bind it to your WireGuard interface. All right, so I'm already here in my WireGuard section. So what we're going to do is we're firstly going to create the interface. I'll leave it as WireGuard 1. I might up the MTU to 1450, but that's a preferential thing. Uh, but its default should work fine as well. MicroTik uses the default port of 13231 whenever you set up a WireGuard interface, but you can make this port really anything you want, but know what the port is because the peer will need to use that listening port to connect to. And this is all we're going to do. I'm going to hit apply. It generates a private key by itself, and it's also got a public key. Now the public key again is very important because the peer, the remote side needs to use the public key to actually connect to you. So I'm on the HQ MicroTik and 
all that I want to do now is I, I want to create a peer, but my peers on my topology, they don't have WireGuard running yet. So let's quickly set up WireGuard on all of the other devices. So I'll just go to the site micro too quickly. Let's add the WireGuard interface on there. So I'm, all I'm going to do is from the command line, do interface WireGuard add. Uh, we can give it the name as WireGuard1. We can set the MTU to 1450. And is there anything else I actually want to do? Oh, and the listen port, let's just make sure that is 1320, 13.231. And I think that's actually all that I want. We don't need to specify the private key, even though you can use your own private key, but if you just hit enter, it generates its own private key. And the private key is important because it's actually what's being used to unhash or figure out what traffic is being encrypted by the public key that you're connecting to. So don't think that the private key is just like a useless bit of config. It is there for a reason, but uh, we can leave it blank. It will dynamically just be created. All right, so now I've got an interface wire guard, and if I do a print, we can see it's generated a private key, it's got the public key, so now I've got a public key that I can actually connect to, but I'd like to do the same thing on my Windows machine as well. So I've installed the WireGuard client on my Windows machine. You can get it from going to WireGuard's site, download it, and from there you can start adding tunnels. So I'll add a new tunnel, and I'll just give this the name as uh, Microtech V7. And there you see it's already got a public key. It's already set its own private key. I'm just going to save this. So if I edit this, we can already see what the public and private keys are. So I'm just going to copy the private key for my computer. I'm going to go back to my HQ Microtech on Winbox. I'm going to add a peer. And then we need to specify the interface. So which WireGuard interface is this for? Well, this is for the WireGuard one because you can run multiple WireGuard interfaces. I'm going to set my public key which is my computer's public key. I need to specify the endpoint, which is the endpoint IP that my server is going to connect to. But uh, for the client, I'll connect to the server's IP. So this is just the layer three address. So 149.1, and then you need to specify your endpoint port 13231. Now on my little uh, client here, I haven't specified a port, so I can set listen port hit equals and I'll just make this one, three, two, three, one as well. So that is now set on the client. So I've got the server set up to connect to that endpoint and I need to specify the allowed addresses. Now again, the allowed addresses is the traffic that you want to route across the WireGuard tunnel that you want to be accessible. So I'm just going to say, I will only allow 10.255.255.3 slash 32 because that will be the IP address that I'm going to bind to the I to the interface of the wireguard tunnel on the client. So I'm going to show you because I'm going to go back to my client on Windows and I'm just going to edit it. And I'm going to set my address to 10.255.255.3 slash 24. I'm making this a slash 24 so that it's like a broadcast range, but I'm only allowing the slash 32 across the tunnel. But you, you can also um, set that to the slash 24 if you'd like. So now my client on my computer has an IP. What I'd like to do is I'd like to assign an IP address to my WireGuard interface on my server as well. So I've already got this IP here and this is when I played around with it earlier. I'm just going to assign 10.255.255.1 on the WireGuard 1 interface. So it's got an IP. Okay, so now we've got our peer set on the server and we've got the WireGuard interface. But <laughs> It's not really going to be doing much yet because I still need to set it up on my actual client. So let me configure my client with some details. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to make these brackets, type in peer, and now we can fill in our peer information. So for your peer, you want to put in your public key. And the public key, again, we'll find that under our WireGuard interface. And I'll just copy the public key, paste it in. We need to set our allowed IPs which is the addresses that we want to route across the tunnel. So typically clients will do something like this, just have a default route route out. But since my VM is running on this machine and my internet is also being pushed over this, um, it, it's gonna cause some issues. So I'm only gonna route specific subnets on this WireGuard tunnel, which will be 192.168.10.0.0.24, 192.168.10.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0
and I'm going to route the 10.255.255.0/24 subnet across this tunnel. And besides that, we also need to specify our endpoint. Now, this is very important because this is the layer 3 IP that you're going to be connecting to, that you need that public key of to connect to. So I'm going to connect to 192.168.149.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
So I'm just going to copy that by going to my actual HQ MicroTik router, finding the public key, copying that, and then I'm going to paste that. And that should be it. I'm going to hit enter. And if I do a interface WireGuard peer print, we should see the peer has been set up. And I could also just export that to have a better look at the config that's been set. So this is the configuration that will make it work. All right, so I've got a peer set up from my site MicroTik now, this left MicroTik to the HQ, but let's also set up a peer from the HQ to the site MicroTik. So I'm just going to head into the peers, click plus, interface will be WireGuard1, public key will be whatever is set here. So let's do an interface WireGuard print. Let's copy this public key. And you see I've copied, but there was that actual equal sign there that I would have missed. So let's just copy that properly. We need to set our endpoint. So in my case, it's 172.16.0.2, which if I look at the topology, that is the WAN IP of the site MicroTik. Endpoint port 13231, allowed addresses 192.168.10.0.24, .0 which is the LAN subnet of this uh, site MicroTik. And let's also just add the 10. 255.255.2/32, which is going to be the management IP of the site MicroTik. I've actually not added that IP address on the site MicroTik yet, so let's just quickly add that. So let's do an IP address print. Let's IP address add, and then the address is 10.255.255.2/24 on WireGuard one. All right, groovy. So that is it. The only difference with uh, MicroTik now and other clients is with the other clients, where whatever you've specified in the allowed addresses, it's typically being added onto the routing table for you. With MicroTik, we just need to force that. So I'm going to add some routes. I'm going to go into the HQ router. And let's just quickly see. I've actually got the route already, but typically you're going to add a route. Let me just delete it and add it again. So we're going to add a route 192.168.10.0, which is the site subnet and i'm going to say to get to that site subnet on the server now we're going to go to 10.255.255.2 which is the wireguard management or the tunnel ip of the site microtik i'm going to apply that and we just need to do the same on the site microtik so let me look at the ip route there and i think i've already got a route there as well yes i do so in theory i should be able to ping 192.168.100.1 from the site MicroTik, which I can. That's very good. Can I ping 192.168.100.100? Yes, I can. All right, so now for the true test. What I'd like to see is from my PC, my actual computer, can I get to the site MicroTik? So I'm actually connecting to the HQ and then the HQ is gonna traf carry that traffic over another WireGuard tunnel to the site MicroTik. So let's see if that works. Let's do a ping 192.168. 10.100, which is this VPC4's IP address. And I can get there. Okay, so this is awesome. This is actually amazing. I'm super happy with this because what we've done is we've actually set up a hub and spoke network where all of our devices are connecting to the central MicroTik and we're actually getting to different networks. So this is very useful. And this can also help you just bring in remote sites using a very secure and fast VPN service. Okay, so I'm going to end off the lesson here. I'd like to thank all of my sponsors. Well, not sponsor. I'd like to thank all of the people that um, support me on Patreon as well as YouTube members. You guys have been amazing. You're helping me add better equipment. Um, I've bought like a microphone arm and a little studio thingy that like helps cancel out some sound. So that's really useful. And it's because of the support that you guys are giving me. So thanks so much. I do appreciate it. And I'll catch you guys in the next video where we'll cover a few more interesting things on MicroTik. I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope 2022 is a wonderful year for you. See ya.